when one thinks about um, the legacy of cryptocurrencies, especially stable coins, I really think that it is going to be that they have shown that there are huge inefficiencies in uh, modern financial systems, especially when it comes to domestic payments in many countries, which are not that easily accessible, that are quite um, uh, cost inefficient. Um, but also when it comes to cross-border payments, which even when you take countries like China and India, there are very efficient domestic payment systems, the cross-border payments systems tends to be beset by a lot of inefficiencies. Now, you alluded to the Eurozone expressing some concerns about the recently passed stablecoin um, legislation in the U.S., which is called the Genius Act. And for Europe, there is a clear and present danger from U.S. dollar-backed stablecoins. Now, the European, um, the Eurozone does have a unified monetary system, but they do not have a fully unified banking system. And most importantly, they do not have a well uh, set up unified payment system. In fact, if you want to make a payment in Germany using your bank account in Germany, that's easy. If you want to make a payment in Greece, using money in your German bank account, that's a lot harder. So in fact, a lot of Europeans rely on cross-border payments through credit card companies that are largely run by the um, US credit card issuers, of course. So Europe is very concerned that stable coins denominated in dollars, which the world still loves, even in the yeah. Eurozone, might end up potentially acting as a payment mechanism. And then if you move outside the Eurozone to countries that don't have credible central banks, that don't have credible currencies of their own, the fear of being overrun by dollar denominated stable coins issued by current issuers like Tether or USD uh, or Circle, or even by large corporations like Amazon is a very real concern. So I think it's sort of a moment of reckoning for countries that do not have good payment systems or for countries that do not have good cross-border payment systems. Yeah. And that actually is a pervasive issue around the world. So how should other governments uh, approach this uh, to make sure that their own currencies do not lose relevance in their economy and in the global uh, economy? So that's a very good question. The um, response has been a largely knee-jerk defensive response, either to ban the use of uh, stable coins denominated in foreign currencies um, within domestic jurisdictions or attempts to create homegrown stable coins, either official or private. I think there are deeper questions uh, um, to be dealt with by many countries. The question about why a foreign stable coin would get traction as a domestic payment system should lead to a question about why it is that a country's citizens don't trust that country's central bank or its currency. If you take a country like Argentina, which is already dollarized, it's because people don't trust the country's government and therefore its central bank in order to maintain the value of the currency. So that is one issue that countries need to grapple with. And of course, it's not going to be an overnight solution. It takes the hard work of rebuilding confidence in uh, one's currency through better policies. And then when it comes to cross-border payments, there are certainly things that governments can do, that even central banks can do, using wholesale central bank digital currencies, finding other ways for um, using new technologies in order to make cross-border payments much more efficient. But it's not just governments and central banks, but even commercial banks that have to up their game. You know, commercial banks are the front point for many countries uh, um, when it comes to intermediating cross-border payments. And a lot of them have benefited mm -hmm. from the fat fees that they get from the existing inefficiencies. Those fees are going to go away. And if commercial banks want to have a significant role in cross-border payments, they better get their act together and reduce costs, improve efficiencies, and decrease processing times of those transactions. Mm. So what does that mean for private sector, especially retailers that are issuing their own stable coins? How do they fit into this long term picture that you see that will be, I don't know, disrupted by stable coins? 
So in the opinion piece um, um, I wrote that you alluded to, I make the point that a government should, in effect, let a thousand payment systems bloom. You know, you can think about stable coins have an important role to play, and those stable coins could be issued by standalone stable coin issuers or companies that have large balance sheets or even social media networks that they can build these stable coins on top of. You could have commercial banks tokenizing their deposits so that they are much easier to use both in blockchain-based environments, but also in traditional finance. Even central bank digital currencies could potentially have a role, although I think it's better if the official sector stays out of this and lets the private sector intermediate payments. But all of this does create certain risks. You know, commercial banks have been very good at intermediating payments, but they have access to the liquidity backstop provided by a central bank. If you have stablecoin issuers that may certainly have their stablecoin issues backed up by fiat currencies, either government securities or cash or other liquid securities, they don't have access to the central bank liquidity backstop. So one can well imagine that if stablecoins become more prevalent without adequate regulatory guardrails in place, you could end up creating more financial stability risks. This is why I think stablecoins are pointing out the problems that exist in financial systems, but I don't think stable coins, especially by themselves, are necessarily the right answer or the only answer. We need much better, more inclusive, more efficient domestic payment systems as well as cross-border payment systems. And certainly, um, regulation has to play a role in allowing this sort of innovation to take place while keeping mm -hmm. regulatory guardrails in place. Ishwa, this is Christine. I want to talk more about the Genius Act in the U.S. It's really interesting because we are seeing now Europe racing to catch up. Um, to what extent does this seal the U.S. dollar's dominance when it comes to digital currencies? And do you think the U.S. gets it, that they need to lead in stablecoin? Now, for the U.S., this is actually a very good outcome, the fact that the Genius Act has passed because, um, you know, it uh, uh, sort of legitimizes crypto. And in fact, for the crypto industry, this is um, phenomenal, especially for stablecoin issuers, because what it means is that they're getting the legitimacy of stablecoins, um, but with a relatively light touch regulation, because, of course, um, this is a signature issue for the Trump administration um, backing off on what they see as very intrusive regulation. So it's it's perfect for stable coins and it's also good for the crypto sector more broadly because one very important role stable coins play is as a bridge between traditional financial institutions and the world of decentralized finance that is built on decentralized blockchains. The fact that stable coins are now, so to speak, uh, legitimized by the Genius Act means that traditional financial institutions like commercial banks can now start, um, you know, using stable coins, um, allowing their clients to bring money in or take money out of bank accounts using stable coins as a bridge uh, to crypto. And of course, uh, even financial institutions might start issuing their own stable coins. But the reason why it's good for the U.S. economy is because um, the uh, stable coins that the world seems to want are dollar-backed stable coins. It's the one currency that everybody knows, recognizes, mm. trusts, no matter what Trump might do in terms of potentially undermining the Fed's independence uh, and the other elements of the institutional framework that have inspired um, international investor confidence in the dollar. So this might mean that indirectly the dollar becomes even more dominant in international payments and it already is while reducing the role of other currencies including the euro and it also means money flowing into the treasury's coffers because the um, U.S. government is certainly going to be running much larger budget deficits under Trump. It's going to have large financing requirements. And now stablecoin issuers might lead to greater demand for those U.S. Treasury securities. So all told, it's a win for the U.S., not necessarily so good for the rest of the world. Okay, and for the rest of the world, like Europe, um, they're just playing catch up. Uh, and you mentioned there's no unity in the banking system, no payment system. So does this genius act, this law, does it mean that the future of digital money is firmly tied to the US dollar? There is no competition out there. 
it's certainly going to make it much harder to compete with the um, U.S. dollar because if you have easy access to a payment system uh, that can mediate either domestic transactions or cross-border transactions very effectively and it is tied to a currency uh, that everybody knows and at least some people love, other people's completely detest, um, but it is a common currency that everybody can anchor on, it certainly makes it much harder for other currencies to compete. So one can imagine a situation where the Eurozone go, goes ahead with issuing uh, a digital version of the central bank currency, the digital euro, um, that might provide some unification of um, the eurozone uh, payment systems, which will certainly help. But Europe, uh, the eurozone in particular, still remains, you know, uh, beset by centrifugal forces that threaten to pull the eurozone apart. So there is no real stability there as well. If you look at China, there is no clear progress in terms of institutional development. Many other economies like Japan, the United United Kingdom are beset by growth problems. So in this, you know, tumultuous world, uh, despite all the failings of the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar still remains the go-to currency, and the prevalence of um, yeah. dollar-backed stablecoins will certainly reinforce that.